Your question, Evelyn? My question is, what is truth and what does truth do? Okay. Uh, technically, truth is the vertebral essence of everything that is. Technically. Yeah. Now, to explain that, everything that, that exists has as its substance truth. That's what makes it real. And the whole, if, if everything that is, is made from the substance of truth, then the substance of truth from which it is made is the, the um, source of all life. So everything, so truth uh, consists of everything that, uh, it, that comes from the source of all life. So those things that we bring into existence through our selfishness is not truth though it is life. Because those things that we bring into existence because of our selfishness does not perpetuate life. It stymies life. It is time to grow. But those things that are brought into existence, hi, existed from, based upon the source of all life, it brings life. It gives new life. It renews life. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, so, so uh, there is no... There isn't a single definition of truth, but it is an explanation or, uh, of truth, uh, understanding or description of what truth is. And, and, and um, uh, truth does not uh, come from uh, us in a physical sense, physical aspects of our nature. Truth does not come from that. Um, Truth is what sustains it so that we can realize that we are the essence of truth. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, it, is, uh, it is the thing that sustains who we are. Okay, now why is it that truth sustains the, uh, the physical essence of our being if the physical essence of our being does not um, does not support or does not encourage the, the growth of life itself. The reason it doesn't is because it is necessary for this uh, intellectual physical being to be sustained in order to give it time, the space, time meaning space within limitations, to come to an awareness of what it actually is which is in itself truth. So there's no difference between truth, light, enlightenment, shamayim, heaven, all those things are the same. What makes us, and I, I already know the answer, but I, I, I just wanna confirm, what makes us run from the truth? The thing that makes us run from the truth is not the thing that, we don't run from the truth in the sense that we think we do. We don't run from the truth like we run from um, something we don't like. We, we don't, we run, the idea of our running from the truth is the, the idea of our being so comfortable the way we are until the truth is foreign to us. So it's not this the idea of running from it as much as it is rec not recognizing uh, it as being substantive to our essence or being who we are. It, it's almost like looking in the mirror and, and seeing a, an Asian as opposed to seeing, you know, Evelyn, the African-American Evelyn. Mm -hmm. it, the truth and, and, and what we have created to be true mm -hmm. is so foreign until it looks that different. To not be familiar. To not be, right, not familiar with it. And anything that we are not familiar with, we have a tendency to shun it. That's just our nature. Even individuals. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, is that why some people do not can't handle certain individuals because of what they know or who they are as far as being enlightened or being you know what I'm trying to say yeah I do um, <clears throat> what you're asking is uh, is, that, is that the reason some people have trouble uh, accepting or being with or being friends with or connecting to 
people who are searching for money. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, that, yes. The reason is, one of the reasons is because they yeah. see something that's familiar to them, but they don't trust it because they're not comfortable with it because it's different than anything that they have ever seen. Okay. So, so, um, but I, I want to add a little twist to that. What you also have to understand is this. There is no such thing as an individual. So whatever is being reflected to you, for example, if Audrey has a problem relating to you because of that, mm -hmm. then what's being reflected is areas in not only Audrey's uh, existence that, need, that she needs to become familiar with or one with, but it's also uh, something being reflected in your disposition that you need to become one with. Okay. So what, it's true what, like a mirror? Yes, it's true. It, it, it is a mirror. Okay. It is a mirror and it's you. Okay. See, at some point in our life, when we talk about being created in image, mm -hmm. we are a reflection of that which is reflected. Can you see that? Yeah. So at some point in our life, we must come to become the reflected. So other people can be the reflection of who we are. Does that make sense? Yes. The objective is not to just be the reflection, but it's to become the reflected. Now, the reason we were made in that image as a reflection was to give us the space to become the reflected. Um, we, when, I, when I talked uh, some time ago about us not being Elohim, but have opportunity to become Elohim, it's, it's that we are the reflection of Elohim, but every opportunity has been presented to us to be the thing that we reflect. And because we have not become the, re, the thing that we reflect, we die as mere men, or we die as the prince of men, as an 80 second song. Okay. Okay? Mm. Now, I, I believe truly that one of the reasons it is so difficult for us to become that reflection, I mean, become that the reflected as opposed to the reflection, is because uh, we have been told that you cannot be like him until you die. You know, uh, after you die, our, our body will be made like unto his own glorious body. But it has nothing to do with uh, our essence, uh, us becoming uh, aware of the essence that we are. You see, it has nothing to do with that. When, when, um, when, when the Adan says, uh, for she is bone of my bone, he said, she is essence of my essence. This is the essence of my being. Uh, that's what he's actually saying. Mm -hmm. and, and flesh of my flesh is talking about um, not only is this the essence of my being, but this is the nature of my essence. This, so therefore, she shall be called Ish. Woman, ish, and and and, and <clears throat> from that it is inferred that um, he becomes at that point isha. So in order for it to be the Adam, the ish and the isha has to be intertwined as one. But once it, the door is open, which is the side, the real thing that's a doorway. Once it is open for the ish isha to be Remove from it, or to have the uh, the to uh, introduce the concept of the separateness of it, then it ceases to be the Adam. It's the Ish and the Isha. For security purposes, this call has sense? been terminated. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Any other questions about that? Uh, it is imperative. Good one. What's the network address here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again? You should uh, be able to search it though, and it should pop up. It's asking for security, you know, passwords. Oh, for the uh, to to get on. Yeah. Oh, uh, the password is pursuing truth. All in one word. Yeah, all in one word, pursuing truth. Lowercase. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, so are we are we okay with this? Yeah. 
All right. Um, if there are questions from the people brought on the broadcast, just uh, type it into the um, the, the uh, comment box. Go ahead. I wanted to add something uh, to it when you talk about uh, truth and why people are, would run from it or not necessarily run from it but not be familiar with it. It would be basically because all of us have done it or do it as well is you basically focus on your um, five senses. So your idea of who you are are based upon your five senses. However, your five senses still cannot explain exactly who you are. So then, for example, you holding that cup and then you wanted to drink that cup in a second. You have to move it up to your exact end. Now, in order for that to take place, there are things that are going on in your uh, subconscious that you have no idea of as far as um, electrons, um, electro signals, and neutrons and things firing for you to lift that, uh, to make your arm lift that to your mouth, etc. So, but what we base everything upon is just our five senses. The five senses cannot explain that to you. You don't know how you did it just now. Interesting. That's so right. it's, it's like a much deeper part of yourself. And so it all of a sudden becomes so much further than what's just actually material or what you have perceived or have began to make with the five senses. Because your whole idea of the world is based just upon your five senses. It's inadequate. <coughs> Which is reflex. But basically reflex. 99% of what we do is not uh, thought based, it's reflex. Him moving his arm right now, he's not thinking. Right, it. it's, it's reflex. So, so we have to not necessarily be conscious of when I move my arm, but be conscious of the idea that the movement of my arm is not who I am. Yeah, because you, you, and I'm just talking specifically from a physical standpoint, just as an, Can I leave it in just there? to give an example. Your brain is doing so much stuff compared to what you actually realize is doing, it is ridiculous. And, and, and that's not, and that's only taking into account um, what it takes for the, the physical movement. Yeah. That's not taking into account um, what's above things. Yeah. You know, that's just the physical movement that is doing, you know, so much is, is taking place. And and it's not, it, it, it's, it's like when we talk about changing the way you um, respond to different circumstances in your life, mm -hmm. there's a period when you become conscious of it, but it should be so natural to you, for lack of a better term, of course, until you don't have to think about it anymore. Your response is automatic just as automatic as your response is shaking your head now mm -hmm. without you realizing what you're doing. That kind of are automatic. If we are automatic in the physical, then that's also indicative of the automatic in the, the, in the uh, spiritual. Because as above, so is below. But we have bought into the idea that we are bound by these five senses as opposed to realizing that the five senses exist because we brought them into being as a reminder of who we are. And it's also shown that we create time with different parts of our brain and how they even prove that is they had someone to get like on um, amusement park ride where they were dropping, I think it was 150 feet, and they showed some, uh, basically some numbers for the person to read. And basically what is uh, proven that only thing that's happening is your mind is determining how, what time is by focusing on uh, different things. So well, we had half panoramic of view and things like that and all the memories, this is your mind is focusing on different things. So time is totally made up by your mind. My time and your time is totally different and can differ at any time as well. It's by movement in comparison to other movements. <coughs> that, uh, if, if the Earth was not rotating in relationship to the sun, time wouldn't exist. So we have created, t you see? So it's all about motion. Well, you know, think talk, you're talking about time, because people show up at different functions or different places at different times. So again, your time is not my time, 
You know, does that it, make sense? It, it, it does, but what we try to do is make our time converge. That's why we set 10 o'clock. So you converge at 10. In other words, our time becomes supposed to become synchronized when we get to this point. But before we get here, it is not synchronized. Because all of us at different points can come in here at different times. Right. Yeah. But the synchronicity of it is on arrival. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, what happens is, what synchronizes it, is the fact that when we get here, we stop. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it synchronized. If all of us arrive at 10 o'clock, we stop. So our time now is synchronized. But, if, but to those who have not arrived yet, then um, their time is not synchronized with our time. So, so it, it is, as Sheldon said, um, a mind thing. Any questions about Audrey? I have a question, but how does the five senses remind us of who we are? Um, the sense of sight is insight. Uh, the sense of touch is our emotions, what we feel. It, um, the, the, the sense of smell is a differentiate, differentiated uh, but what, what's, um, what's present, like it talks about um, the sweet smell of the incense that the uh, Creator has um, as it's burned on the altar. Um, the, the, and the other thing, uh, the word is like, it's bitter to the taste. Um, this, the, the sense of, of smell and taste are so connected until it's very difficult to differentiate between the two. So it, it's in that regard. Uh, I, I want to, uh, are there any other questions? Because I, I want to show you something. Um, I, I want to I wanna put something out here. Um, Welcome to ACU Conference. Please enter your conference card now. When we look at, when we look at the um, second chapter, uh, in Genesis, um, you said second. second chapter in Genesis. Foundation. Um, we joined to your conference. Starting with that, that um, fifth verse. Um, we see that we talk, we see the writer talking about uh, every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and, uh, was, and God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field, right? Mm -hmm. So, if he made the, the earth and the heavens, every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. You see that? That is talking about um, the whole concept of, um, of, 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 of planting, um, the, the, the idea of plant talks about to attach, but field is talking about to spread out. I don't want really to get into that as much as I want to look at how it morphs into uh, the next verse, which is the sixth verse, where it talks about the mist uh, from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Now, this is interesting to me. Um, I have a question about number five. I don't want to do that. Go ahead. <laughs> but it said every plant of the field before it was before. in the earth. Right. Every herb of the field before it grew. It, it was, what he's saying is that he made the earth and he made the heaven. So every plant of the field is every utterance, because plant also means to speak. Okay. So every utterance was spread out. It's talking about spread out. It, if it was, it was there before it was placed in the earth, it means that it had to be in the expanse of the heaven. So it was, every utterance was enlightened or, or, or was heavenly or was light prior to it being introduced to the earth. And life itself, because the earth talks about being green, uh, and the life of this field 
uh, was there before it was allowed to, to grow, to, to go beyond the bounds that, that were set for it. Okay. Yeah, because I feel as um, those things, those plants were not in the sense uh, created as in it was new and never was there before. It was of the essence that was already there and always has been there. And always will be there. Yeah. Because it talks about what well, when growth talks about to spring forth or to sprout. So before it, any of the, the, the life utterances <coughs> were able to sprout, it was in heaven. So it was not in the earth yet. It's basically just in a new form, but it isn't new. Right. Now this is the other thing. It says that the the uh, Yahweh El Khim, Lord God, uh, had not caused it to rain upon the earth. Um, when you, when you um, when you look at uh, the premises of, of, of not, it, it was it talks also about a prohibition. So so um, the rain was prohibited uh, from from falling upon the earth, and the idea of, of rain um, uh, is in relationship to the concept of vapor, of mist. Because it goes on to say, and there was not a man to till the ground, but there went up a mist from the earth. You see that? Mm -hmm. A mist from the earth. So it says that um, the, the waters, um, or, or if the, the spiritual was not allowed uh, to water or to nourish the earth consciousness, um, because there was not a man to serve it. Till talks about to serve or to be enslaved. So there was not a man. There was not an Adam. Uh, the, uh, the Adam did not exist to serve it. To serve um, it meaning to serve the ground, to till the ground, to serve the ground. And, and the ground is the substance of the earth. So it, there was no one there to, to, um, to serve the substance of the earth. But there went up a vapor. It was a vapor that uh, uh, from the earth that that watered or that nourished the face of the ground. It did not say the face of the earth. It, it watered the surface, the uh, face of the of the substance of the earth. That's what it's actually saying, because it does not say it watered the earth. Now, what is that vapor that that was doing that in in the spiritual? Sense. You remember last week when we talked about beginning, I told you that what I saw was this light and then it, it uh, morphed into this, uh, this um, a, a light covered everything, but then there would come a mist from the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the vapor that was in the earth consciousness. That mist that mimicked it, that, that it was not darkness in the sense that there was the absence of light where the room would be dark. It was darkness in that it was confusion. And the idea of the man tilling the ground or serving it, it was the idea of him bringing order to that, of the Adam bringing order to that. And, and by virtue of bringing order to that, what he's actually doing is uh, continuing what happened when the light separated from darkness. It was it's up to the Adam in the earth realm or the earth consciousness to make that separation of light from darkness which means that he is to take that vapor or to take that disorder and bring order to it. And that in itself is what makes him the reflected as opposed to the reflection. That's what makes the Adam a a as Elohim. Can you see that? What is it, Ron? I guess I'm still trying to see till. Okay. In, in, in relationship to what we have... Uh, what we call the fall, it, it, we've always felt that man only started laboring or, or was told to you, you would need to labor now after he fell, after he disobeyed God. But till here talks about to labor, to serve. Yes. So if you look at this, is he saying you are going to, this is, this is the, the, the consciousness that's above you you're, you're, that, and you're going to have to, he, he's almost telling you right here, flesh and blood won't get this. But he also talked about worship. Right. He also talks about, about worship. worship. 
So I, and I, I'm I'm trying to trying to trying to open this up and see it, cause uh, let's move forward a little bit. It may help you. Okay. The, it also goes when you go forward. It says that um, something about the man keeping the garden okay. uh, to keep. What is it? It's, you have to go past the um, the rivers, I believe. When it talks about to keep and to what? Yeah, I'm trying to remember what verse it is as well. Um, it's 15. Verse 15. 15. Okay, put him in the garden to dress and to keep it. The word for dress is the same word that's used for till. Okay. So, so when it talks about serving or worshiping, right? Yeah. Or submitting to, because worship talks about to submit to, right? Right. Now, keep talks about to guard. So, so, and 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 in order, I think to um, to get a better understanding of it, we have to see garden differently than we have in terms of um, out there in the yard, right? But we're talking about an enclosure. I, I guess mm -hmm. I, what I, what I'm kind of saying, you tell me if I'm wrong. It's almost like you don't recognize who you are now. You're in an infant state, and. I'm putting this together, just like where we are now, what we call the fall. It's, it's in a merciful state that man has existed in because he has no idea who he is. And when he recognizes it, he sees the power and what he's capable of doing, he'll be in the right mindset to control it or, or to do what he's supposed to do with it. But in this infant state, you will destroy yourself. Even though the so-called fall that hadn't taken place, it's, he's saying the same thing he said after the fall. Well, what you're going to see, in, in a, what, you, what happens, you know, immediately after that, the whole idea of, 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 of forming this man and breathing life into him, it's talking about breathing anger. What? Breathing what? Wow. Yeah. Breathing what? Anger. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I get to that in a moment, Shelby. What Ronnie is saying, uh, and what you just said, all this is internal and all of this is uh, spiritual, then the spirit will be more indicative of <coughs> that essence that always belongs and that uh, Adam is supposed to serve uh, till the spirit, so to speak, then that would just mean that it would be uh, mm -hmm. the ego. And it also would mean with that uh, anger, the ego would be that driving force that is supposed to drive that person to truth. Um, but it got mixed up. If uh, if he were to to worship, it, it says to till the ground, right? Mm -hmm. If he was to submit, or if he were to submit to the substance of the earth, then it would be up to him to um to rule over the earth. Because he said dominate, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what does that mean? Uh, dominate talks about um, to um, not take advantage. What's the word I'm looking for? Not, not protect. Mm -hmm. to, it, it's, dominate means to, I mean just to, rule, over, to rule over. To rule yeah. over. But not so much control. Because control infers manipulation. Yeah. So, so, so it's... It, it, it's it's more about um, being being the earth being the uh, god of it. Just having more power. More, yeah, more power than the earth itself has. The yeah. consciousness. So if you are submitting to it, to this earth consciousness, then you come to the realization that you are supposed to dominate this earth consciousness. How do you do that? What does he mean by that? What he means by that is you ought to bring order to this disorder. You have to bring balance to that which is imbalanced. The imbalance is not um, the imbalance is not what we think it is. The imbalance uh, is the whole concept of this mist uh, of this darkness coming in or pushing into what is light. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So if it's this, it's like a a a a a, a fishbowl full of words that makes no sense until you put them in order. 
if you put them in an order that causes you to be religious in nature, then you create the God that you want to serve. But if you put them in order to be reflective of the light from which you emanated, then now you're recognizing the God who created you. Does that make sense? Yes. Nikki. That, just hearing that, or like the umpteen tone, just brought something to my mind that this is what man was put in charge to do, which means that it was, of course, in disarray before man. A, a, yes. Okay. The, see, earth, heaven represents the light that we talked about in the beginning. That's what heaven is, is indicative of. Earth is indicative of the, the darkness or the confusion. Okay? Now, when it talks about the ground, it talks about the substance of the earth. That's what ground is. And when it talks about dust, it's talking about a powder or a substance of the ground. So, it's, 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 so dust is more refined than the ground, and the ground is more refined than the earth, if you look at it in physical terms. So, so it's talking about, it's actually talking about the whole, con the Adam being made from the, uh, a substance of the ground. And that substance of the ground is feminine, because the ground itself is feminine. So, so Adam, the Adam was made from this substance of the ground, which is feminine, but the whole concept um, of um, the substance itself uh, is, is masculine because the utterance is masculine. When it, when it talks about, um, where is the utterance? Of oh, the herb. You know, that's that, you know, though, I'm, I'm sorry, the, um, uh, every plant. That's utterance. So, so, and the feel it, is, 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 it means to spread out. So all of these, all of these things were in existence before this whole idea of a physical man that we see. But more importantly than that, what we are actually seeing in verse 5 is a man. What we are actually seeing in verse 7 is a man. What we actually seeing in verse 17 is a man. You see what I'm talking about? So, so it is different aspects of the same Adam, man. I, I guess what I'm, what I'm saying, what, what's kind of amazing to me, if I'm seeing this and hearing you correctly, we've always felt like before chapter 3, everything was harmony, everything was smooth. So yeah. what this sounds like is all the letters of the alphabet thrown in a bag and you take them out and, 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 and create what you want with them. It, it's, it was always there, but you do what you supposed to do with it. That's free will. So, so to bring balance and harmony to it, it was always man's job to do that anyway. So this thing that we, we, we have linked in between here, like there was a harmony before the fall and, and then disharmony after, that didn't exist. No, didn't exist no, like no. And, and that's, that's what struck me when I began to look in depth uh, at verse 7. And, and when I look at verse 7, of course, I begin to back up. Now, these are the things that's really, really fascinating. If you look at verse 7, it talks about the man. Then it talks about the God. Then it goes in into what? Uh, after it gets past the God, it goes into the rivers. Yeah. Then after the rivers... What does it do? It talks about the man again, right? Mm -hmm. And then it goes on until it talks about it's not good for this man to be alone, right? Mm -hmm. Then it goes in and talks about the beast. You, you see? Yeah. So, so at one point, it begins talking about um, the rain did not water the earth. The earth was watered by a mist that came up from the ground, right? Mm -hmm. Then it goes into talking about this man. Then it goes back into talking about water again. What leaves the God, the enclosure. So, so, so there has to be some semblance of a connection between um, the, the plants and the earth that were there before they were put into the earth. Where were they? 
They had to be in the place of enlightenment, which is heaven. Before they were in the earth. So, so what's happening is that the consciousness, and let's not see this as beginning, but for ex purpose of explanation, let's see this as consciousness, okay? So what happens is that the, the consciousness was made available. The earth consciousness, the idea of confusion, the, 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 the substance that give us opportunity to create what we desire, that was available before the Adam was available. Can you see that? And the Adam was created from that which was available. The substance of that which was available. Can you see that? That, sub that which was available, that earth consciousness, is talking about something, as you pointed out, the alphabet being in a glass bowl and you choosing. You can either choose to create as you want to from that glass bowl, or you can choose to stay where you are in terms of the enlightenment of the tree of life. What I'm saying to you is this. It all, it, when it talks about heaven, earth, it's talking about light, darkness. It's talking about man's free will being developed. It's talking about as above, so is below. It's talking about tree of life, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's what it's also talking about. Because when you talk about the tree of life, you're talking about heaven, enlightenment. When you talk about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you're talking about confusion, disorder, etc. This man was not brought into being the way that we think he was. We think that he was brought into being in harmony, as a, as, a, as a being who was in harmony with the creator and who made a decision uh, out of nowhere to be different. In order for that man, or that, and I don't say me, man, in terms of Larry being a man, uh, and I'm not talking about mankind in terms of the earth and mankind. In order for the Adam, the essence of the creator, the reflection of Elohim, in order for this reflection to be able to make a choice to become Elohim, that in, in this entity had to be the opportunity not to, which means that earth consciousness represents the opportunity of not being reflected, not, being the, not becoming the reflected, not becoming Elohim, but remaining a reflection that is confused about its existence, or about who it is. Can you see that? Yes, sir. And 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 do, and we follow the course of things. We we began to see that what would breathe into the man. When you look at breathe into, it talks about to kindle, or to blow. Uh, but when you look at uh, a, a nostril, it talks about rapid breathing and passion, as in anger. Breath talks about being angry. So, so the whole concept of, of, of what was put in this man, what was kindled in this Adam, what if, um, to make this entity become a living entity was something contrary to what we have thought in the past. It, 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 is, an, it is the opposite of peace and calmness. You, you bring up another point. Uh, we talk about earth consciousness, right? Whose consciousness was it? Okay. Uh, the conscious, the earth, in order for beginning to take place, space had to be brought into being for it. The, the creator had to constrict himself in order to create the space for beginning to be created. So when the space was created, then beginning came into being. And when beginning came into being, the ultimate objective was to bring a reflection of Elohim, right? The, the, that's what the ultimate objective was. So, and, but in order to do that, some foundational things had to be put there. Just like before this building could be constructed, there had to be a foundation dug. The digging of the foundation is beginning. Mm -hmm. The point of the concrete for the foundation is light. Putting the blocks on the concrete is earthly, the confusion. Mm -hmm. So now we have these two things, but we still don't have the building. 
we have the foundation. Right? Before the, the, before the, the, the uh, plants were placed into the earth or before the earth were allowed to grow or to expand, right? Before a uh, plant was put into the field, rather I should say. Before all of this happened, it was in the mind of the creator. It existed in the heavenly place, right? Before the building is raised on the foundation, it is in the mind of the architect or the builder. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It means that it doesn't exist to your eyes because you can't see it. Am I making sense? Yes. So, so now the, the, the uh, construction is about to take place. The building is started. So the bands are, are, are put out there around the foundation, around the blocks, and the floor joists are put in. Got it? So now the ground floor is there. If you can see that as the, um, as, as the, the, the man being made from the, the substance, the dust, the substance of the ground, with the ground being the plant itself. Uh, and, the, and I'm sorry, the ground being the, 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 um, the walls of the building itself. Now, all these walls are raised, or they're raised around it, and now you have an open space because it's not being sectioned off, partitioned off into rooms. So, so, so now, once it began to be partitioned off in the room, what you're developing is the thought concepts of the earth. You see? So, so all this open space is there, but it has the potential to be sectioned off into rooms. That's earth consciousness. How these rooms are sectioned off is up to the individual who's doing the building. I remember when we did the, the addition of stairs, the way it was framed up, was my concept of how I wanted it. But the way it ended up was Phoebe's concept of how she wanted it. Because they said take the walls down and do it the way she, she wanted it done. So our concepts were for compartmentalizing, but they were different. Right. You see? Now, we could have, I could have said it's going to stay the way it is. That's male domination. But it, it went up the way she wanted it, but now she wished she had left it the other way. So, so, so that's confusion. The whole, the, the, but we came to grips with that, and now it doesn't matter. That's order. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. And, and, and this is how the man with, with the Adam was brought into being. And now, in order for for there to, to, have, to be a substance to this, this atom, in order for this atom to be able to, to be Elohim, to create, this atom has to have the, the ability to choose. And the ability to choose comes from that foundation. It comes in the form of the earth consciousness, which is confusion, and the light. Now that is, this entity is there, how does it become a living soul? Once it's formed from the, the substance of the ground, how does it begin to, to, to have life? And, and the idea of living soul is talking about a, a developing appetite for something. That's a, a figurative explanation of it. Or, or, to, or, or to develop an emotional appetite or to develop desire. How does it do that? In order for it to, to have this the desire, in order for it to be this emotional being, in order for it to live, it, it, it living is not talking about breathing the way we breathe. Living is talking about having the same essence as the one who created it all, meaning Elohim. How does it have this being the reflection of Elohim? The way it has it is for Yahweh Elohim. Uh, for the Lord God to breathe into the nostril or the face or the, uh, or, or the whole idea of, um, of, of passion, to light that fire of passion. And, and the fire of passion that is lit is not, uh, not the, the, the fire of peace, but it is anger. And anger is not in the sense that we see angry. Anger when you are angry with someone, it means that you are you have become his adversary, right? And out of anger comes what? Confusion. 
So, so the opportunity to be an adversary to light had to be there in order for free will to exist, for it to become what it, what it was created to be, by choice, as opposed to by mandate. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. And I know I'm saying a lot. Is this, is this getting clearer? And we probably will have to go over it again and again and again. But, 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 but this is, this is what, what brought it into being. Now, when you look at the emanation of the waters from this enclosure that this man was put in, the enclosure that the man was put in was an enclosure that had opportunity to move to a place of pleasant, of uh, pleasure, eastward. Uh, uh, or it could uh, remain where it was, knowing that in the middle of it was the idea of the tree of life, which is enlightenment, or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is the earth consciousness. Every one of us are both of those to this day. We, we have a nature that, that we choose from every single moment of our lives. The knowledge of life or the knowledge of good and evil. And, and the knowledge of good and evil is simply being able to discern or having the wisdom that guides you to or away from that which is which brings unhappiness. It, what evil in this it, when it's used here talks about to be unhappy or, or talks about displeasure. Good talks about being pleasurable, being prosperous. So you have a, the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you have that choice. But when you when you deal with light, it's all pleasure. So so um so so you can choose to bounce between the two, or you can choose to stay with the one. And the choice was made to bounce between the two. Mm -hmm. Now, in doing so, we have to get to the place where we are able to produce at our own kind. So what happens? Since we have chosen to bounce between the two, um, what Elohim actually says is it is not good for this man to be alone. Well, let me back up. Before we get there, let me look at the waters that's flowing. When you look at the waters that's flowing, it is talking about the different personality traits or cultural differences. And the cultural differences that are reflected here are the cultures of this world to this day. Th those are the cultural differences that are reflected there. Now, keep in mind the cultural differences that are reflected there. If this is the man, uh, in terms of the, the uh, spiritual entity, right? And all those cultural differences are flowing from that spiritual entity. Guess what happens? When this entity becomes solid or physical, all those cultural differences does the same thing. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And as they become uh, a, a physical or solidified, they appear to be different than this dark man, and they began to separate from, this, from, from the uh, entity. Why does it do that? Because the whole concept of separation is put in it from the beginning. Can you see that? The whole concept of individuality and separation is put in it from the beginning. Now, where did it come from? It started all the way back here, but it doesn't end here, meaning beginning. It doesn't end there. It, uh, when you move forward, if you fast forward to the idea of the help me being made, then what you actually see is um, this: it is not good for this to cease to exist, for, for the Adam not to cease to exist. So how do you keep it from exist, ceasing? What you do, you surround it with feminine energy. That's the help me. And once that is done, then he goes into a trance. I'm sorry, before that is done, he goes into a trance. And the trance means that he's neither sleep nor he's awake. He's neither living nor dead at this point. He can make a decision at this point to remain Adam or to become Adam uh, and, and Eve, Hava, or Adam and Eve, or to become Ish and Isha, to, to the masculine and feminine being separated. That's a choice. This is what he says. The word that says, and, 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 and he brought the woman to the man, it says, uh, it says that, and Ish came, Ishar came into him. The door 
of the, the word side, a rib, talks about uh, opening of a door. So the, the doorway or the opportunity was opened up for him to be able to see the feminine energy or the feminine aspect or the feminine entity that he, that he was comprised of. The feminine entity as well as the masculine entity that he was comprised of. And when the entity of femininity was moved out of that door, it came back into him. But it came back into him differently than where it was when it was taken out of him. And, and, and you will see that when you look at what took place in the enclosure in terms of the thought processes. He said, it is this woman that you gave me, didn't he? If it was the woman that was given to him, and I need to look at that again to be clearer, clearer on it, if, but in, if it's a woman that was given to him, where did her thoughts come from? Him, because she was taken out of, you see? So it was still him making that decision. Him, for lack of a better term, because I, I, I don't like particularly using Ish and Isha because you don't, you know, it, that, that, that's what was that, that's what he was dealing with here with, because it says that and he brought Esau to him or and Esau came into him that's the word for woman when it says that the Lord God brought the woman mm -hmm. that that's Esau it's not Eve so this is the first introduction of Esau so what happens following that is he makes a decision this is cause enough, or this is the, enough for Ish to leave his father and mother and cleave to Esau. Can you see that? So what is he saying? We will, we will, we will become the Adam on our own, the way we choose to. Because the Adam consists of Ish and Esau, right? When the Esau is separated or taken away from it, or he perceived that it is, then now it is the Ish and the Isha and not the Adam. But when it comes back together, it is the Adam, the Adam. And that is the reason when we make reference to man, regardless of the language, we are talking about man generically when we talk about a man does this. Mankind, we are talking about it gen generically as opposed to talking about the physical attributes of each. And of course, there's some more stuff involved in that. But to tell the story from, from here to where we are at this point was necessary to go skip over the whole uh, idea of what each river means and skip over the idea of the beast. Because each one of the developments of this man, of the Adam, is, it, it is um, there was another aspect injected that seems totally different or have no connection whatsoever to the man if we look at it in physical terms. Because if we look at it in physical terms, the whole idea of the rivers leaving after you talk about the man in the garden, and then you talk about it's not good for the man to be alone. Now we're talking about beasts. Then you talk about the bringing into being the, the woman, you see? So all of these are seem to be not, not connected, but they are totally intertwined with each other. And because when you look at you talk about the beast of the field, it's talking about uh, uh, it's talking about uh, I think it's, it's, it's wild beasts or wild thoughts, and, and, and the cattle deals with um, more domestic or uh, four, four footed something. So 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 um, if if I'm to continue talking about what I'm talking about, y'all got to have music question. I have one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I want to go back to where. About the doorway, yeah. Um, the rib. Yeah. I need you to go back. We need to pick this bone a little more. Uh, well, get the bone. Okay. <laughs> the, the when you look at, I'm trying to find it. Okay. Uh, the I, rib. What chapter? What verse is that, Rob? Oh, about the rib. Yeah. Um, it's um. Oh, it's twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay, and the rib. Okay. Oh yeah, twenty-one. Um, when it when it talks about uh, uh, the real, it says um, it took <laughs> one real, right? Um, one can also mean um, 
the only the only one, or it can mean another or a certain rib. Now, when you look at the word uh, for rib, uh, it's talking about a curvature uh, of a person, but figuratively, it's, it's talking about um, timber, a wood, plate, beam, uh, but when you look at the root of it, uh, it, it's talking about something that causes you uh, to limp, but looking back at the um, original of it, it talks about a chamber, or a corner, or a, or a door, okay. leaves of a door. Okay. So, so it's talking about the, the uh, entrance rate, for example, when we talk about 1111, we talk about a portal or a doorway opening. Mm -hmm. Nobody saw that with their natural eyes, but you sense it spiritually. That's in the sense of the door that it's talking about. Okay. It's talking about uh, this man being opened up. Uh, it's like I open up a space in me for you. Okay. That's a door that I open that you came in. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's what it's talking about. And we use these terms all the time. You open the door, so I'm coming in. Yeah. You, you see? Yeah. We, we use these terms all the time. So that's in the sense that it's talking about. It's not talking about a literal real, but it's talking figuratively about a real, yeah. an opening. Okay? Mm -hmm. Any other question? Does that help? It does. Um, there, there are a lot of, lot of words that's here that um, that's not there. Uh, it talks about the, um, the drawer was closed up. Um, then uh, then it, it talk, when it talks about the, um, the idea of um, the flesh, it is that the euphemism for it is um, pudenda. And, and pudenda is um, the um, sexual organs. That's, that's what it was talking about uh, in, in a physical sense. I have another question, Anthony. Go ahead. If it was not Eve that he made bone of his bone, who was it? Or what was it? Uh, first of all, Eve and Ishaw are the same person, but different points. They're the same person. Yeah, but, 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 Eve is not a proper name. Right. Eve, he says, and her name shall be called Eve because she is the mother of all life. She's the womb from which all life comes. So Eve is, he's saying, uh, she said, Ishaw is the womb from which all life proceeds. That's what he's saying. <clears throat> based on your explanation. That scares me to death. Based on my explanation. <laughs> it sounds like he could have rejected her. And here's what I mean. Not to say that she would not have existed anyway. But it's almost like I want the animals was the prerequisite for this. In other words, I want you to understand masculine and feminine energy. So here it is, you're looking at the character of, because it's Adam that does it, it's Adam that well, makes it. Well, are still there. Yeah, so, so after that is when he goes into the trance. And as you said with the trance, he's neutral. Yes. So he doesn't see his masculinity or his femininity. He accepts this based on his experiences with the creator and what he's already seen, what he's already experienced. Right, am I, am I seeing mm -hmm. this correctly? So um, what he sees then after this, he sees the power in the feminine energy and what he's able to create with it if he becomes one with it again. And that's why he says to God, I can leave you now because I have my own femininity. I, I, I recognize my masculinity and I recognize my femininity. I don't need you anymore to create. You know what Am he I did? that right? Yes, he took the reflection of that he is of being real. He took the reflection to be the reflected. Okay. In other words, what he saw in the mirror was, was a reflection of Elohim. Mm -hmm. And the reflection that of Elohim that he saw in himself 
is what he took to be Elohim. Okay. There's no different than we do God now. We, we, when we, I got you, when we talk about the creation, mm -hmm. we talk about God scooping the dust and making man, how big is his hands to make something as little as we are? <laughs> if we're talking about it literally, him making it molding us, because to form means to squeeze into shape. Mm -hmm. So how did he take his hands and squeeze us in the, in, into shape? Where is, the, where is the part of the earth that he was small enough to stand on to mold us into, <laughs> you, you see? <laughs> so, so, so we are still doing the same thing. We are, we are, we are humanizing the, the deity that created us and calling it God. And that's the light that we are talking about that controls everything. So basically what you're saying, what Ron is saying is that he just basically designed his own illusion and then brought into it and denied the truth. Yes, I'll tell you a good example of it. You remember the golden calf? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It lived. It moved. It was real. And it was real small, but it was real. He brought that into being because he was able to create. And the further we got away from where we were in the beginning, the less we were able to do it. And the further we got away from it, and the less we were able to do it, we began to demonize it. I mean, that's mm -hmm. also because mm -hmm. the, the more you get away from something, the more of just a shadow or just a portion of it is of the whole. So it's the same thing as claiming to know everything or know something, and when you claim to know everything or know something, you automatically set up a limit, so you automatically fool yourself and start living that illusion that you started to live. And, and when you do that, a great example of that is the wall of China. When you do that, you put a wall around you, and, yeah. and, and um, you begin to retrogress. You don't remain stagnant. You begin to retrogress. Right. So, so, so the, whole, the whole idea of, of bringing this entity into being, we call it uh, magic, which is evil. Abacadabra is a Hebrew word, no, it has its origin, rather, in the Hebrew, which means let it be as it should be, or something like that. Are coming to being. I create as I create, speak. I create as I speak. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I create as I speak. Abacadabra. Uh, I create as I speak. Mm -hmm. Now think about what that's saying. Mm -hmm. I create as I speak. What is it saying? As I speak, I am creating. So watch what you say. Because you are bringing into being what you are saying. It doesn't, just because you don't believe it, it doesn't change it. And the further away from we, this we've gotten, the more apt we are to call it, uh, to, to demonize it, and say it is something evil and dark that we should not deal with. Look at the whole concept of astrology. Because of the way men have used it, to manipulate other men, we have demonized it when this is the same astrology that the Magi, which means magicians, used to find Jesus. So why is it that these evil magicians were able to find this glorious divinity and preserve it? Why? Why did this evil, these evil magicians bring this divine being, as we see it, gifts. When at the same time, there were priests who didn't see it. But these magicians did. Mm -hmm. From Mesopotamia. And it was not three wise men. It was upwards of 20,000 that came through there. 
You ought to read the whole story about that. It's something other than those Sunday school books. Because the amount of money that they were carrying with them, they needed those with them to protect them because there were bandits and robbers along the way. Mm. How did they see this? Because of astrology, they watched the stars. And the scripture spoke of the star over Bethlehem, did it not? Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so these are the things that we have to harken back to and begin to see just because we call ourselves modern doesn't mean we know everything. We know less now than we've ever known. So, so this entity is so connected to, to its source until it is virtually, not virtually, totally impossible for this entity to be separate from it. And this entity is so connected to its source until this entity uses the terminology to make reference to it. Uh, I had a light bulb moment. Or, uh, or you've been kept in the dark about this, meaning that you didn't know it. Right? right? right. We use the same terms to, to, to talk about these things. And, and, there, and, 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 and there was not a man to worship or to submit to uh, the ground. And, and, and therefore, he, he, when he saw that, then he brought into being a man that was made from the substance of the ground, which is Adama, which is feminine, right? right? Then it began to be watered, right? If it began to be watered, that entity that were made, that if, if it is spiritual, it is talking about a spiritual watering, right? Jesus says, that which is born of the water is water. That which is born of the, of the uh, I'm sorry, the flesh is flesh, right? And that which is born of the spirit is spirit, right? That which is born of the flesh comes from where? The water. Does it? The embryo the and the sap. Yeah. Does it not? That which is spirit, nobody knows where, where it comes from or where it goes because you can't see it. You, can't, you can only experience it. You can't see it. So we, when we look at all of these things together, the woman is actually representative of ground. And rather than walk on the ground, we need to understand that the ground is us and we are it. Can you see that? Rather than mistreat the female, we need to recognize what it actually represents. And I use the term it purposely because it, female is an it, and so is male in it. We have, we have genderized it, which again separates. And it also, when we genderize it, we also have superior and inferior. But when we recognize that these bodies of ours is, is not who we are, and we began to look at the, the, the way the, 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 um, the gender or the energy that's in the words that's written. Let me show you what I mean by energy, word energy. When a word, we call the word feminine, that means it has feminine energy. Masculine has masculine energy. And when you begin to look at these words, especially from the, uh, from the Hebrew, you begin to see that they don't switch off. All the way through, they, they represent feminine energy of the, of the energy with the womb, the brain to, to be able to nurture that which it surrounds. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So, uh, any questions? Any? I don't even know where I am now, understanding and sitting on this door. Beyond that, I don't know where I am. Because this is not the course that I had intended to take. But then it never is. So, let me look at something else. No. Okay, I know what it is. Verse 18. It says, it is not good that this man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate for him. That word be, alone shouldn't be there. That word be talks about it is not appropriate. Uh, or it talks about greedy or to covet. 
It is not appropriate for this man to be grieved. So I'll make him a help me. I'll make him something to surround him to nourish him so he won't be greedy. So where'd you get me? Follow, follow B. Hmm? Follow B. Um, which, which word? Uh, you see B? 1961. Uh-uh. Where are you? I'm at 18. Okay, you see the word B? Yeah. You mean follow oh, it down so it's oh, over? Is that what you're saying? Oh, right? Yes. Follow the word. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a letter. Follow it, follow it back. Mm -hmm. and, and when you get back, follow it, touch the, the, uh, the first one. Yeah. When you get to the two, it talks about desire, incline, covenant, wait longingly, wish, sigh, want, to be greeted, to prefer. To long for the lost down. You see that? Yeah. When you follow it back to its root. So, so man, disrespectful of the female, ends up being greedy. He begins to covet the, the oil in the Middle East. You see that? He began to covet everything that's going to make him rich, to keep him in control. Can you see that? Yeah. Do you see the principle? Mm -hmm. It's being played out every single day. It, his desire is to have what someone else has. In other words, excuse me, his, his desire is to have more than what he needs. Look at how it's, it's translated in the church. Um, uh, uh, and he will give it back to you, shake it down, and all that other stuff they say. Mm -hmm. That's greed. And he can't let you have life but have it more abundantly. That's not talking about money, but that's where it's translated. Mm -hmm. you, you see? Mm -hmm. Greed. As opposed to dealing with what you need. What, and, and who is in charge of what the scripture says. Male. Who's in charge of religion? Male. And do they take input from female? No. If you agree with them, yes. If you don't, then you're just a woman. Well, sister, that, 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 that sounds right, but it's not quite right. And if you push it, you're ridiculed. Mm -hmm. It's been a troublemaker. Right. And you ain't never found it. Yeah, and you never found it. <laughs> <laughs> but when you recognize the feminine for what it is, then greed is not there. You be, you, when you're properly nurtured, you desire what you need, but the old rich you desire to give. You see? Yes. It, it's not about being selfish, lusting after. As much as as much as it is about being a womb that produces, so that others can become a womb that produces. Can you see the picture? Yes. Any questions? What you got, Bob? Well, I, I see where that is desires, but then um, it, it's it, it's it's almost a comparative. It says it's compared to. It's compared to the same as when you compare something to something. I guess it, is, it does show relationship. Relationship between that and greed. Yeah. Well, with greed is selfishness. Uh -huh. And covet. Yeah. I just saw a connection, not on the spiritual level, but I, I know it's connected on the spiritual level, but on a, on a masculine level as far as greed. Um, do you notice how that greed will also destroy itself in the long run? Not in the short run, but in the long run, but it still goes on that course in trying to uh, acquire what it will basically be in greed. Guess what? Because it's not sustainable. Um, the seed that died. Trying to, be, uh, trying to be done. So you have to have that nourishing uh, part that actually sustains uh, things and can see long term. This is needed for the survival Period. That's why that's when the seed dies without a womb. Because when you talk about the masculine, if the masculine 
does not can have. actually do exactly what it wants to do without any female input whatsoever, it will die as nowhere that it can survive. Because and that, and that's that, it. And that goes into uh, governmental uh, issues or stances and policies as well. All of these things that we're seeing here are being acted out today. Let me show you something else. Without respect for the feminine, you don't see any of this. Without respect for the feminine, you don't see any of this. I, I was sharing with someone yesterday, um, one, one of my friends was asking about where I get my understanding, my information. And I, talk, I told him that uh, I have downloaded the Bible where I can go back to the Hebrew and, and see the meanings and understanding but one word can mean several different things depending on the context. And, and I said to him, just because you get the word doesn't mean you know how to put it together. He had no concept of that. No concept whatsoever of not being able, if you have the definition, you ought to be able to put it together. But understand, depending on context, it may mean something totally different. Then he began to grasp what I'm trying to say. That you have to have divine intervention or revelation before you can bring forth, understand. In other words, the wisdom of the divine has to be present before the understanding can come. Does that make sense? That's what I was saying. What you said in the beginning is total confusion to you until you submit to it and let it come to you. And that's tilling the ground. Yeah. That's submitting the, to the ground. Everything is about allowing the feminine to be what it was created to be. And everything we see in our life does just the opposite. It does just the opposite. It, and when I say allow, I don't mean that in, in, in a sense of um, subjugation. I, I, I mean allow in terms of stepping back and getting out of the way. Stop trying to manipulate it. Stop trying to you know, mold it. You know, just let it be what it's supposed to be. And I, I realize too with that, when we do that, we really see what life really is. Yes. And, 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 when we, and when we see what life really is, what is it? Well. And I don't mean that just yeah, you know, of course. I, you just see that it's not what you've been told or it's just. It's not what you've been living. Yeah, it's. It's not what you've been living. Uh, I saw, I saw um, a, a, a bumper sticker that said something about, I said, I believe in God and God and he is Jesus, something like that. And it troubled me that at one time, people saw a difference, even though it wasn't a difference between what they called God and Jesus. Right. Now, it got so far away from what is actually there, they combined the two. Mm. You see? They combined the two. And the whole idea of combining the two gives you rise or give you opportunity to be able to say, in order for you to be saved, you must make Jesus the Lord of your life. That sounds okay because we're accustomed to hearing it. But what does it mean? I, I, I got a phone call and the guy asked me, he, he asked me, when Lord appears, in the New Testament, what does it mean? And I said, Jehovah. And he said, I just wanted to make sure that what I was told was right. He said, I, I talked to um, this Jewish guy, and that's what he told me. And I wanted to make sure I'm right. I'm like, you will call me to make sure the Jewish guy right. <laughs> <laughs> that says something. So you can't make Jesus Jehovah of your life. You, you can't do that. 
because Jehovah was, is over his life too. That's right. And if you look at the Aramaic expression of Lord, it, it is also an expression of the light that gets your attention, that attracts your attention. Mm -hmm. So Jehovah is the same light that attracted Jesus' attention, that attracts our attention. So he, so when you say Lord of your life, that in itself doesn't make sense when you look at what it actually is saying. But we've gotten so far away from. Isn't that idolatry? You say that again. Is it what? Isn't that idolatry? Yes, ma'am. And 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 to say it, it, it is. It's also <laughs> blasphemy. <laughs> Every time somebody say that Jesus is Lord of my life, that's blasphemy because you are taking the power away from the source that gives you power. You're, you're minimizing it. Now, Lord, Jehovah, you're minimizing the, the, um, uh, who Jehovah is and, and, and you're relegating Jehovah to being man. Mm. That's, that's, that's blasphemous, it's idolatrous, it's all those things that really, um, what? It puts you in an enclosure that seemingly separates you from the light itself. So you live in a world of confusion. You don't really get clear answers to anything when you, when you enter that, that realm. That is the reason um, when you ask questions in those settings, uh, you get the wrong around. Now, now you hear what I said. You get the run around. The run around does what it surrounds, doesn't it? So confusion surrounds the question that you ask. We still use the same terms. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. We still use the same terms. It, it surrounds the question that you ask as opposed to giving birth to the answer that you need so you can be surrounded by the truth that you are. Does that make sense? Somebody needs to say it again. Any questions? What you got over there, Barbara Jean? <laughs> <No question. laughs> mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff in there, isn't there? Back to 15. Back to the garden. The okay. garden is a place that's edged off. Whether it's thoughts, whether it's whatever, it's, it's, it's set apart from. So if you put, it, it's, it's a hedge about to, to protect, to defend. It's almost like he, um, like the, like the entity called Adam was placed in the in the this, this <coughs> area, but if you go down to eighteen, it's almost like the woman was a requirement to keep the man in balance. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. the thoughts were in balance, but then exactly. the man needed something to keep him in check too. And I don't mean a woman as a woman mm -hmm. or you or not, but that energy mm -hmm. you was there to, to keep that masculine energy surrounded and within certain boundaries. And, and don't you say that, Barbara? You don't mean as a woman, but that's what happened. Well, yeah, but that's, that's, <laughs> that's how it manifests, yeah. how it manifests, but. Because I tell anybody, if, if I say we're going to do so-and-so in the future, I don't think we all do that when I do the mess up every single time. But if she said, okay, then it works out. Don't nobody tell her I said that. <laughs> I don't want her to know she's right. <laughs> it seems, I mean, it really does seem like even in the physical, that would bring balance to us on a whole because he you know, didn't want to tell you a man will do what you let him do. The minute we as women start saying, okay, uh-uh, I'm not tolerating you said that. Boundaries. They come in, they would probably all align up because we're not having the disrespect, the you know, the craziness that's going on now from that that physical aspect. Well, did you look at the brought the word brought? Uh, what verse? When, when he brought her to him. What verse? Um, 
verse what, 12. Oh, it's, uh, it's well to the bottom of it. Verse 22. Yeah. To, you know, to come in. No. It, he brought Ish. And look at the words that are right there. So what makes a masculine and feminine word is the energy. Yeah. That the hope, um, the idea of um, when it says that he made is different than made in other places because it talks about to ordain. You see that? To, to, uh, I'm mean, sorry, to obtain rather, or, or uh, to build. It talks about the beginning. And, and is that the same place? Um, I wonder if that's the same word from which uh, Ben has taken son. Thank you. things and I named all these things but now finally something it's, it's almost as if he's saying I created this one because it came from me in a sense it, even though it was the entity did not create one he's just saying finally something that's just like me that's that's bone of my bone essence of my being reflective of me image of me that's right, image of me. Yeah. Which means then that that's when the when he when man began to see himself as 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 a god in in himself. That's because he was created in my image. That's where the superiority uh, concept comes in. Huh. I finally see something like me. I'm superior to it. If you look at. Um, the whole idea of family didn't even <laughs> exist like that. You know, so he brought that, and then there was this around him to bring balance. Mm -hmm. So when it came into being, he saw it as something smaller than him because he, you know, he felt like he was there first. So why did he think, or it, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Y'all get another Why thing did it think that, what made it lose the sight of that it was, it was part of the source? Why? The, the difference. It, it had a choice. What makes you lose sight? You pull from that area of confusion and make it be what you want it to be. How many times have we said that you can't see the forest for the trees or said that love is blind? You, you can't see what's going on even though it's happening right before your eyes because it chose to. Then one day you have a moment when you have an epiphany and say, this is what everybody been trying to tell me. Now, 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 so many times. Now you're saying from the, from life. Yes. <laughs> oh, um, I got you. I'll get that. Um, <laughs> this is in him. The part that that, that come out. My question is, what did, what what happened? I mean, where did it come from that? Before, before she came into this, before she, before God pulled the thought of him away from himself. Okay. This, uh -huh. all of this, is feminine energy. Okay. Okay. All this feminine energy. Okay. And. All of this is masculine energy. The different colors represent function, not how it looks. Okay. Okay? Okay. So, 
This entity is a thinking being. Right? Okay, yes, sir. So now, the entity, the Adam, this is the Adam, goes into a trance. Not sleep, not awake, not dead, not alive. It's just there. And this entity recognizes the, the feminine energy, right? So a doorway, a portal of understanding is open. Okay. And he sees it for what it is. Yes. And once he sees the function of it is different than his function, All right. then that's where the idea of separation comes in. Yes. Yeah. Can you okay. see that? Can I see it? Yeah, sir. Because yeah. if you see the, the idea, we can't look at it from the perspective of, um, of um, what? What I want to say, y'all? Uh, we can't look at it from the perspective of a male and female as we see it today. Okay? I want to. I want to um, looking for something. Um, if you is it, look at, <coughs> I think it's verse seven. Is it? If you look at verse seven, okay. When he breathed into the entity. Okay. Both of these were still there. And, he, and the idea of breathing in was, it was anger. What made it a living soul is that he had a choice. And oh, you, you see, he had a choice. That was there all the time. Yes. All the, this was all the, right. It was there all the time. Mm -hmm. no. Now, okay. let me walk it. <coughs> Let's walk it, okay? You can either be masculine <coughs> and feminine with the tree of life, meaning that you're masculine and feminine based upon enlightenment. Right? Right, right, right. You can be masculine and feminine based on your knowledge of the tree of good and evil. That's the idea of separation. That's the concept of superiority that males have. The tree of, the tree of life has in it masculine and feminine. It is masculine and feminine. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is masculine and feminine. It produces after its own kind. So you have so so that so most of us go after or eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yeah. Most of us do that. And what we call it when we when we have a desire to stop doing that, we talk about the struggle. Right. What is the struggle? Right. The struggle is not a physical struggle, is it? No, sir. Is is the struggle is you make it is, is with you making the decision to deal with it differently or to deal with it the way you're accustomed to. And 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 though we can say it, it sounds easy, but it, it is not an easy thing to change it overnight. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. yes sir. And, and the more that we make a decision uh, to move in the other direction, the, the less we begin to see those entanglements or that confusion that tends to govern our life. But as long as we keep responding to it the way that we always have, it doesn't change. And we say it doesn't move until you get it corrected, right? That's not the case. It doesn't move because you keep reproducing it. That circumstance. Mm -hmm. You keep reproducing it based on how you deal with it. Think about it. Yes, sir. You, you, someone hurts you, and you keep going right back to them all the time, right? Mm -hmm. You keep going right back to them all the time. That hurt is continuously reproduced by you, the way you respond to it. But when you change your response to it, then it begins to minimize. You may shed some tears. You may you may feel it like you you know get into a state of depression. But once you get past that stage, mm -hmm. what you have actually done is is made a decision 
to purify that thought or that event or that circumstance. So now that you can not, so that you don't have to go through it again. What we call this, now that you've done that, you have shed some light on it and you see it for what it is. Right. Don't we say that? Yes. We shed some light on it. And you see it for what it is. So, if that was in him all the time, why didn't he have to just leave it alone? Because there's not free will. It, Free will. Oh, yeah. See, first of all, you have to. Yeah, let's go good. back to the reflected and the reflection. Mm -hmm. We are a reflection. We are the image of Elohim, right? Yes. Yes, right? We are not Elohim. We are a reflection of Elohim. We have the, the, the affinity to become Elohim. But rather than become Elohim, we create our own Elohim. Our mm -hmm. own life. Mm -hmm. Theology. Religions, mm -hmm. we create our own. So we are the ones who made the decision for it. What is, what is the superior religion in the earth? What is the superior religion in the earth? What's the superior religion in the earth? Come on, y'all. Christianity. Christianity. Superior doesn't mean most people adhere to. The predominant is. Christianity, which came from Catholicism, right? Mm -hmm. Who are the ones on earth who believe in Christianity more than anybody else? At least they say they do. What do you do, brother? But who pushes Christianity more than anybody else? The Caucasians. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the, the God that we created. Yeah. Right. Who is the one who tells you what it means, and if you say something differently, you're on your way to hell? In Caucasian, but that we're Caucasian. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's an right. adherence to that. That's true. That's the God that we created. This is not about race, this is about concepts. That's the conceptual God that we brought into being. Right. Regardless of, of being able to sit up there and look at the lake of fire as being a place of pleasure, or refuge, a place of restoration, they still can't accept that. That hell is a place of restoration? Yes. The lake of fire purifies. When you look at lake, it talks about a, re, uh, uh, a resort, a place of repose, a place uh, where you are replenished. That's what it talks about. Yeah. It doesn't talk. Huh? Purification. Yeah. It, 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 and the fire it is. Property. It, it doesn't, it, no matter how much you, you let them see that in the scriptures, it doesn't change what they believe. And the day is talking about that concept is still out there. And that concept resists being altered. If you can see that concept as the uh, earth consciousness of the confusion, the struggle is to bring that concept under submission to light. That's the struggle. And the more you, 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 you attempt to do that, the more resistant the struggle becomes. The whole concept of confusion is representative of an attack on femininity like no other time before. And because of that confusion, you have it representative in a hurricane headed towards the confusion that brought it into existence. Can you see the picture? Yes. This stuff is real. This is the concept. And, and, and the concept changes as it goes along to fit what people will accept. It never seeks the depth of the truth. Why? Because the concept says the only language of these words that's prevalent to me or important to me are the words that's written in my language regardless of their origin. King James is the only Bible. Mm -hmm. Is that not the concept? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so this has everything to do with conceptual understanding and acceptance. And, and the only way we change that is by creating as we speak. Creating, bringing into being a, a concept of enlightenment. 
and, your, and, and, and this is something I, I truly have to say to you. When you leave the foundational concept of light and darkness, because you feel like you don't need it anymore, you do not have the foundation necessary to bring light to this concept of destruction. Can you see that? Yes. In order to, in order to bring this concept of destruction or this conceptual belief under the submission of light of truth, you have to remain with the foundational concepts that brought everything into being that is. Whenever you sever your ties to that, it's just like filling a balloon with helium and letting it go. It will float until it collapses and then it falls to the earth of use to nobody. Can you see that? That's how important this is. Look at where we've been. I got you back. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong. Look at where we've been forever and a day. Right here in Genesis. Oh, trying to bring it back. Uh, something Barbara said that got me thinking. We, we, uh, we were talking about the, the man and uh, the woman being brought to him and the, the, the reflection. And see, I, I've been thinking about everything else that he had sight of. I mean, if you look at the grass of the field, if you look at the trees and all those things representing thoughts and, 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 and principles and whatnot, and even the, the animals talking about thoughts, she represented something entirely different to him. And, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to kind of go back to that and elaborate on it. But maybe that was the fascination of it, because that, that's the first time he had seen that. Um, you, you, you see what I mean? All the other things that he saw, uh, maybe maybe he did not see her as being internal. Now he sits there and says that maybe she represents something totally different. And asked me to elaborate on Put it out there. Okay. Um, what, what I'm seeing as you speak is. The, the question that rose in me as you were speaking was, why is it that it is the master that made the decisions as opposed to the thing? <laughs> made the decision of what decision? It, about the separation, uh, uh, you know, why, why, why not the, the thing? He had a feminine that wanted to make decisions. It didn't work out so well. <laughs> <laughs> and the results of that are still unfolding. <laughs> so what I read the fast forward. Let's fast forward to, to the seed. The seed is masculine. The seed has in it life. The acorn does not look like a tree. You can walk around with a tree in your pocket, with an acorn, but if you got an acorn in your pocket, you got a whole tree in your pocket. It's <laughs> really small. But can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Now, that acorn, that tree that's in that acorn exists, it just not has been manifested. Right. Why hasn't it been manifested? Because it doesn't have a womb. Your pocket is not a womb. So the seed, if everything was created from utterance, from word, right, mm -hmm. then the word becomes the seed. But in order for the seed, to, the, the word of utterance to come to fruition, it has to have a womb. Okay. And the womb that it has is the feminine. Wow. Now, the language is Hebrew or English for woman is the man with the womb. Womb, womb man, womb man, right. the man with the womb, regardless of the language, that's what it is. So, so the man had to have a womb. Now, if you want to look at it 
from the perspective of physicality. When it, it, for, for, for better understanding, maybe. When you look at, what was that word that, that was used uh, uh, for, uh, well, let me just say it. When you look at the male organ and the female organ, they are different. On the surface, they are totally different until you begin to get into the anatomy of it. But they have different functions. So just maybe the <coughs> difference that he saw is manifested in the differences that we see. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. and, and because of the differences that the entities saw, mm -hmm. we were able to see the differences that we see. But regardless of the differences we see, reproduction doesn't come without that womb. Got it? Right. Mm -hmm. So if you can, if you, not can, but if you control the womb in this earth realm, then things go awry. You say crazy stuff like forcible rape. You say stupid stuff like a legitimate rape. You see? The further you get away from the truth, those are the truths that you create for yourself. But this entity saw the differences just as we see the differences and, and felt superior to it and without realizing that they were the same. I just wanted to point out that that issue with forcible rape and legitimate rape is, is saying that only a man can define whether or not she's been raped, that she right. doesn't have the the, the power, the wherewithal the to actually, or the capacity to determine whether or not she's been raped. And I also wanted to point out that this business with abortion, regardless of the health or how she got pregnant, is to say that that seed is more important than the woman carrying it. And that um, it's really, it's, it's, almost, it's almost as if like that the, I don't know. I guess that that's really the point. Like well, she has is. no value except to when she's it. carrying that child. Now, let me show you how right you are. In cultures today, further from where we are in terms of this concept where we brought into existence, right? That concept that Janice just described is still in action. If it's not a seed, a boy baby, the baby's killed in some nations, some cultures. You see? Mm -hmm. So the seed is more important. Now this is the stupidity of it all. If you were able to kill all the females that came out, then what's gonna carry you to make it a boy? That's the same concept it, I was saying earlier. That self destruct automatically, automatically destroy itself. So 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 what Janice is saying is real, more real than what we realize. So these concepts that are playing out now simply says to me that we are reaching a point of um, no return, but an opportunity to move forward. Can you see that? We will not return to these concepts that we have had or adhered to. We will move beyond them. And the way you move beyond them you got to expose them. And you can't expose them if they don't show themselves. They have to be exposed to the light. Go ahead. That's okay. Verse 1. Heavens and earth. Heaven is, as you said, Earth is in verse one, chapter one. Two, two, two. Eretz, which is feminine. Then down here, I mean, so so the so the, 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 the issue of masculine and feminine type 
energies were there, as you said, to start with. Then in verse four, uh, verse four, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, which is one thing, and the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And so it, it's, it's like um, the, the entity Adam and Eve are um, heavens and earth as well. Um, I got you. I see it. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I see it. These are the descendants of the heaven and earth. That and I, they are yeah, I a, see that. A, a heaven and an earth. Yes. It's generations of it. So the light that we are is the heaven and the darkness that we are is the earth. These are the generations of I see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there anyone who don't see that? Just raise your hand so we can elaborate. We are the descendants of the heavens and the earth, which means that we are not these bodies that we fight to hold on to. If we are descendants of the heavens and the earth, it is incumbent upon us to bring light to the confusion, which is earth, so everything will be heavenly, so everything will be enlightened. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the unicity of what we speak when we talk about bringing light to mankind, mm -hmm. or mankind being enlightened to the point where it becomes the reflected as opposed to the reflection. What does you see, Bob? The, 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 the difference between the words create and, and made. And made. Go ahead. Um, in, in the, in verse four, you talked about the generations of the heavens and the earth. I, I, I'm looking at the order of it too. Um, heavens and the earth were created. <coughs> and created, creates means to um, to shape or fashion. Or, and then in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, um, made means to accomplish something, to bear, to bestow, to appoint, to... I don't have it all put together yet, but it's just, it's, it, there's, a, there's a, just a slight nuance of a difference there when you're talking about initially heaven and earth. And then um, in this verse it talks about and when he talks about the term create, he uses heaven and earth. But when he talks about the term made, he uses the word earth and the heaven. Um, as if it's a for, right. for one or of this issue of, yeah, you cannot have any masculine without the feminine. Okay. In a sense. Uh, I actually can see what you're saying. I, I do too. I'm, I'm glad you can see what I'm saying. Help me see what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> I guess part of the created being being the forming, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to put you together and then I'm going to give you purpose and the may be, be the purpose and the earth takes precedence over the heavens in the purpose. Not not really, oh. but no, it, it I, kind I, of flips, it kind of takes the reverse. Um, I, could, where I see it is that when you talk about heaven and earth, that's the way things were that the light was above all the confusion. When you're talking about earth and heaven, we have projected the earth, that was the opportunity to project the earth or the earth consciousness above the heavenly consciousness of the light. And we do that in religion, we just reverse it. They talks about an eternal perpetual thing. Um, it, so what he's saying is that the opportunity to reverse it 
was was um, was made. You, you see, it was it was shaped uh, by the Lord God, uh, Yahweh Elohim, and the way it's supposed to be was created. It was it was created the way it was supposed to be, but it was made the way in a way that was going to present itself so we would have a chance to reverse it. Yeah, I just saw it as it was reversed in order for free will to take place. Okay, same thing. Okay. Yeah. Can you see it, Bobby? It, it rest you. Can you see what we're talking about? Yes. I, I think it unfolds so that yeah. nothing is, is placed out of order. And, and keep in mind, it says earth and heaven. Eretz which is different than Adama, which is ground, which is a substance of the event, substance of the earth. Can you see that? And all life comes from the womb, right? Mm -hmm. And without the earth being planted, there is no life, even in the natural. Everything we eat depends on what comes from the earth. Everything we eat. Even if you eat meat, the meat eats from the earth. Everything depends on the earth. I th Go ahead. I think about if not if you know, um Denise talked about um the force rate and rate in general and I think about how you were saying that the earth is the womb. Um the earth is constantly being raped just like the womb. Um, Haiti, the reason it is so dangerous in Haiti with all this rain is because it's been deforested. Mm -hmm. It was ravished. Don't we call it that? Yeah. The, the forest was ravished. That's rape, isn't it? Yeah. That's true. Wow. So that's, that's why it's, wow. it's so dangerous. If it were not for that, then the land could absorb the water. Hmm. Uh, and, and, and look at what's happening um, in, in, the, in, 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 I think, in, the, in Idaho. They were talking about the reason the fires got out of hand is because when lightning was struck, they would put the fires out. They should have let them burn because it was burning the undergrowth. But since they didn't do it, they produced more fuel for the fire to get out of hand. So the earth knows how to protect itself. It knows how to reproduce if we would just let it. If we were, if we were in tune with it, in balance with it, in rhythm with it, then it would do what it's supposed to do. And if we do what we are supposed to do, then this whole concept of manifest destiny dies. Chris, I think about how back when people used to plant, they would have gardens in they, a certain place at what? Every seven years you had to they, change. They rotate the would, crops out. Yeah. So so the uh, soil would not become depleted. Yeah. And, and you know, this whole concept, and I, I said this and I should explain it. Manifest <coughs> destiny uh, is, was a doctrine um, that was put forth saying when they decided to explore the West, saying that uh, God intended Earth for man, and everything that they found as they traveled West belonged to them. Found, keep that in mind. White, man. white, the white man found. That's the idea of manifest destiny. It was put forth by this that we concept, we are God, we own everything. Same thing. Yeah, they're paying them for the same reason. Everything you say, I said, they did just like they did. They left England for the same reason. Yeah, all these we don't want to be caught, we don't want to be pushed. And again, there's no blame, there's recognition of what happened. What do you mean? If there's blame, it comes from the origin, and there's separation. So, so it's no blame, yeah. it's about what happened. When we start blaming, we become stagnant. Blaming does not allow you to think clearly enough to do anything about it. 
recognize the issue and seek the solution. Because blame kind of kind of takes us away from that in some way, shape, or form, whether we know it or not, we contributed to it. We, that, that we are that. We are the 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 beginning of, of that which we seek to correct. Right. And we, we play a role in it, all of us. And and blames disconnects you from that. And it takes, it's an attempt it, to do it. It takes anyway. power away from you even being able to change because right. you've been away oh, acknowledging yeah. that you don't have the power to change it. You have no control over it as well. And, right. So so this is not about blame. It's about recognizing the conceptual attitude that emanated from the desire to be separate or emanated from um, developing an affinity for that which results in confusion. So Adam was stagnant when he said, the woman that you gave me. The Adam. Yeah. Um, I'm not even sure that, um, that uh, and it may be Adam when it says that in verse three, I'm mean, chapter three, the, the woman you gave me. I'm not sure that it says ish, I mean Adam or ish, I'm not sure. Okay. And I'm not even sure at this point because of what we've seen that the whole idea of um, you gave me is valid anymore. Yeah, I got you on that. You see? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think these are things that... Um, wow. Need to resurrect. Yeah. It, um, it means to grant, to give, designate, to bestow. The word gave is gave me. Mm -hmm. And woman is Isha. And the man is Adam. How do you spell Isha? Uh, I S H S H A H. That's one way of spelling it. I S H S H A H. Or I S H A S H. That's one. That, that's I S H A H. That's another way of spelling it. I S H. Yes. What is it? Isha. Yeah. I S H S H A H. Okay, so when you said the man is Adam saying the reason this happened is because of the feminine energy that you gave me. Oh my God. Huh? Oh for my real. God. Look what I did. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, yeah. No. I, I, she, 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 <laughs> She's not what I thought she was. <laughs> um, restored against. Oh my God! If you look at me, it talks about against. And she. Talking about myself, I. If you look at she, you are oh, you looking at she? Yeah. And look at me. It, it, it's, it's almost like he recognized that he's blaming him himself because she is talking about himself. And and and, the, and um, me is against. You see that about? Well, but she is also Ishia. Okay. So it's talking about the energy. Mm -hmm. If you had not given me this feminine energy, I wouldn't have done this. Hmm. You still hold. 
If it wasn't for that woman, I wouldn't have messed up. If it wasn't for that woman who gave me that, I wouldn't have messed up. Yeah. So but I forgot that I said that this is essence of my essence. Yes. But wasn't Adam, he was saying that to himself. No, uh -uh. this is no? what I've been saying. Okay. Bob, what Bob said was, he forgot he said this is essence of my essence, bones of my bones. Right, okay. Now all of a sudden, it's her fault. Yeah. It's the fault of Isha, the, the feminine energy, made him do that. Oh, <laughs> with the implication being, okay. it's your fault, creator. Yeah. Because you gave me this energy. So, you place some blame, okay. So when you come home, when I come home from work, uh, I smack you, you made me do that. Why do you keep making me beat you? That's right, Elmer. You see? <laughs> Boy, that's okay, don't say what you're thinking. <laughs> but 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 you you see the concept of law. You made me do this. If, if you had not burned the food, if you had if the food had been ready, I wouldn't hit you. Then the food was ready, it wasn't cold, I wouldn't hit you. Wow, that's, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. That's the first. That's the first um, use of abusive. You made me do this in the abusive language. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's abusive. Mm -hmm. Or, hey, let's go back to the idea of rape. You had no business dressing like that. You made That's the same thing. You made me do this by the way you dress. Mm -hmm. Ooh. You, Ooh. That abusive, you, you see? Yes. yes. Justification or an attempt to justify what you know is wrong. Lying to yourself. Yes. Deception, self deception. <laughs> you know, I see why God had to redeem man from himself. Cause this is what you just said. I just I now I see why Elohim had to redeem man from himself. Yeah. In actuality, man had to redeem himself from himself. Right. Because if you look at the journey of Jesus, his redemption came through accepting what he saw. The light to be. Mm. You see? Yeah. So your redemption comes the same way. Except in the light that you see. You got, to, you got to live it. You can't just sit here and accept it intellectually or academically. Right. You got to recognize that that's who you are. And that's the, that's the fruit of your life. That's what, that's what you live. And, and you don't have to think about, I'm going to live this, I'm going to live that. Just accept it for what it is. As Nick said, set, what, set the direction of your intent and just be. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Any questions? Does this make sense to you? Okay. If there isn't anything else, I'm done. Are there any questions? Um. I, I, I do believe that that we have to um, revisit a lot of stuff. Yeah. And in, in order for us to actually know what's being said. Now, you know what else I see there that, that he was saying? What's that? Um, it says that it's on the heels of God saying, who told you you were naked? Right? Mm -hmm. He was talking about how cunning he had become. Mm -hmm. So he was trying to con the creator. You, you see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Conned the creator. And then yeah. believing that it's the woman that you gave me. Yeah. I do that all the time. Yeah. Um, I, I, I see, again, if we believe this stuff literally, then how big does God have to be for God to walk through it in the cool of the evening? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, if we, if we, if we accept it literally, yeah. how, how long was the garden? <laughs> 
So we're talking about his essence that flows through the enclosure that you're in. And, 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 and you say, well, how do you explain that? Well, when you are about to do something that you know is wrong, the essence flows. Now you have a choice. You can go ahead and eat from the tree, or you can choose not to. That's the walking through the garden. That's the movement. That's, that's the essence flowing. Can you see that? Yes, sir. And it, the, the, um, the, the, the thing that gets me here is that though that separation took place in terms of the man and the woman, it's not recognized in. When you look at that eighth, eighth verse mm -hmm. in that third chapter, it's not recognized. It says, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife, uh, the Adam and Isha, hid themselves. You see? So, so if it were recognized, then it, it, it seems to me that it would have been Isha and Isha, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, the, the idea, it says that uh, themselves means withdraw, to withdraw. Right. It doesn't, it, it doesn't mean um, uh, and, and the word presence talks about surface. So the Adam, the Adam withdrew the feminine energy uh, from the surface or within, to within, within himself. He withdrew. In other words, he, he recognized it for what it was at that point. Can you see that? Help me here, Bobby. I'm, I'm not there yet, sir. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm back at the word naked, because um, in the second chapter, they use the word naked and unashamed, and in the next thing, three, yeah. just before you got to, well, he, they heard him, his voice walking, and then he told them, asked them, who told you you were naked? And in the, in the, in the first section, nakedness had to do with um, innocence or integrity, um, or depending on how you um, define the word. And it, that kind of nakedness, um, you don't fear uh, vulnerability or exploitation. You just, I mean, it's just like... You give the verse that that's in, Bobby. Um, okay. uh, 25, 225. Okay. It's, it's just like, I mean, it's just like a nudist camp. You're comfortable. Yes. You know, it's not, you don't, you don't look at that, or it's just like a city of the clothes. Right. You know, so it's that kind of nakedness that they were talking about um, then, at least a perception that they were, they had nothing to be, to fear, nothing to be uh, ashamed of, nothing to, um, to hide, in a sense. Um, and if I go to three, Seven, they sewed the fig leaves, so now they did have something to hide. Yeah, and they, it and it, and it went beyond. It went beyond because it didn't have bodies, so it went beyond the the sense of hiding figuratively a body part. Those, yeah, it, those, it, it, it was deeper than that. Those two naked, uh, naked are two different words as well. Um, the one in um the second chapter, and the one in this one. Uh, yeah, the one in the uh, the meaning is totally different. Uh, the one in the second chapter more so means to be uh, almost uh, pure, just to be uh, bare. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, other one has to uh, more so do with being crafty. Being what? Crafty. Crafty. Oh, oh cunning and crafty. It 
also it says uh, helpless as well in the um, in the one in the third chapter. Wasn't like that. Wasn't like that. God didn't see them. Okay. It's like he put together an, an approach to hide what he had done, to hide the cunningness, the, the sort of the fig leaf thing, it's, it's, it's try, making an effort uh, to conceal what had taken place. Because I see the, the one in the second chapter is just being uh, pure. Um, Maybe like uh, innocent. Yeah, and uh, well, n n having nothing to hide. Right. Yeah, right. there's no desire to hide anything because there's nothing to hide. But the other one is talking about hiding it, the, the cunningness of what you've done. Yeah, because yeah. when I say vulnerable, I don't mean it in a negative sense. Right. I just mean just bearing you all. So the yeah. same thing when you are vulnerable to someone, you are giving them all access, you're giving them everything. We say that in all, in here all the time. You gotta make yourself vulnerable yeah. in order for you to be strengthened. And and in the expression of our vulnerability is the idea, I tell you, uh, let me give you an example. I'm sitting on this stool facilitating, right? And you're sitting here doing research. I'm vulnerable. Yeah. We won't get an understanding without my vulnerability, mm -hmm. but if I was con and being crafty, I would say, you know what, that's not necessary. I understand this. I don't want you to do this. Crafty is exactly the automatically the opposite of being vulnerable yeah. because you're trying to set up some type of wall to right. confuse. You don't and want to know everything. That's why you can't go anyplace else and sit in a, in, in a pew and do what Bob is doing right there and exactly. what Sheldon is doing exactly. and, and say, uh, that's not quite that or let's. You've got to make yourself vulnerable if you are going to be able um, to resurrect truth or truth is going to be resurrected through you or with you, however you want to term it. You have to be vulnerable. Yeah, crafty yeah. is not letting the left hand know what the right one is doing. Right. That's crafty. The vulnerability of it all is, is understanding that your fortress is the creator. So you don't have to be afraid of their faces. Mm. You see? Mm. The, I, I think it is exceptionally, I, I'm sorry, it's an expression of exceptional vulnerability in a spiritual sense when, when, it, when we come together in the setting. But there's a greater vulnerability, I believe, when, when the teachers come together. All bets are off. You know, the vulnerability goes to a place where it doesn't go here because most of the time we don't pick and choose our words. We just say what we say. But sometimes you have to pick and choose because of the, the nature of the people with whom you're dealing. You just can't say anything to people. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. You, know, yes. you, you cannot say, well, it doesn't matter whether Audrey can accept it or not, I'm going to say what I got to say. Right. There is a way to say it so it is palatable to her without diminishing the divinity that she is. There's a way to say anything. You know, Rem Hawkey used to say, you can call a man a dog, but call him a big dog. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I got a feeling that we're going we to revisit this again. Yeah, it's so much other stuff. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. And, and I, I, I That's really... That's why Ron can't get out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a, a, a Ron was the anchor that kept drawing us back, right? <laughs> I, I really, really, I really think that um, the, 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 the way we are doing this is different than we've ever taught before. Uh, by virtue of all of us teaching this, you know, I may be sitting here, but everybody's teaching. 
And, and, and I appreciate the, the depth of understanding that we get when that takes place because all of our teaching styles are different, which means that all your, your learning styles are different as well. So you are a recipient of how you, uh, of how you learn. You're, you're a recipient of that from the one who's doing the teaching. Because we've said the same thing, but we all say it you know, in different ways. Okay, I'm done. Because I, I promise you, we have covered quite a bit in terms of understanding who we are. Any questions or comments before we shut it down? Okay, Bobby Jean. Excuse me, Bobby, let me say this. Um, I want you to think the teachers are coming together. Is that next Saturday? The third. The first. first. The first. Next Saturday at, at my house, all the, the teachers are coming together. And um, um, the, um, the, the, the seed of this came from, from, from Ron. And I, I don't believe that it would, it's haphazardly done. Now, a brief time, I want you to think about what time we're going to get to teachers. I want you to come together at the end of this and think about what time we're going to get started, okay? All right. And to consider whether or not we're going to um, record what we do. All right? Okay. Go ahead, Barb. Okay, we're gone. Bye.